welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about change and goals for the upcoming year. So if you have not already started thinking about that, we're going to go ahead and talk about those things today. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about change. First of all, nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. But the only thing that is inevitable and that is never changing, <laughs> never, is that change will always come. So knowing that things will always change, um, what would you do if you knew that you couldn't fail? What would you do differently if you knew that you would succeed uh, no matter what it is? Or what would you try? Something that you have thought about trying that you decided like, oh, I'm just not sure I could do this or that's probably for them but not for me. Um, I know there's a lot of things in my own life that I have thought about that I think it's just kind of not for me, it's for somebody else. So what, you know, just think about that while, um, while you watch this video for a few minutes. What is it that you would do? And maybe jot that down if you have somewhere that you can write it down. Um, I mean, crazy things like, I don't know, start a multi-million dollar business or, you know, go to, go to college and get your nursing degree or I, I don't know, whatever it is, you know, go overseas and to the mission field or start a ministry or what, whatever it is. Uh, it could be just crazy, you know, crazy huge. So for me, I think if I knew um, I couldn't fail at doing something, there's several things that I would do. And I, I started asking myself that question a couple of years ago and just really thinking like, what is it exactly, Catherine, that you want out of life? What is it that you want to see done? Do you want to stay the same? Do you want to keep doing the same thing? Or do you want to make a difference? Do you want to use the gifts that God's put inside of you and actually start living the life that you were intended to live? And of course the answer in my in my mind is I, I want to do all that I'm supposed to do. I want to do all that I'm called to do here on this planet while I'm here. So I started thinking about it a few years ago and um, God just really put in my heart um, to do some big things. And I was afraid of those things and they had been in my heart for quite a while. Um, but one of the major... Mm, I guess one of the major enemies that most of us probably face is our own self. Our, uh, we are our own worst enemy a lot of the, t the time. And for me it was like, uh, you know, you probably can't or mm, you don't have the, whether it's the financial backing or you feel like you don't have time or the support. Well, for me it was kind of all those things like, and you know, and I didn't feel adequate. So feeling inadequate kept me from trying to do a lot of the things that I knew I had been destined to do or had uh, God had placed, you know, this thing for me to do. One of the major things he's told me to do is write, write a book about my story. And uh, my story is, it, it's a very lengthy thing. We won't get into it. And that's obviously why I'm writing a book. But there's, there's a lot of tragedy in it. But there's also so much more than the tragedy. There's so much greatness. There's so many things that God has done to turn what the devil meant for evil for my good. And it's an encouraging um, testimony. And so I'm supposed to write that. And it's been one of the biggest challenges that I have faced um, outside of mothering. Because <laughs> that's a pretty big challenge. Um, but, you know, I, I have really just decided to do... Well, I, start, I started doing it small and just a little bit by a little bit. And um, I might, you know, it took me like a year to write a, a couple pages. Um, but this past year in 2019, I have just decided at the beginning of the year, which is really hilarious because I just had a baby in 2018 at the end of the year. So I had this, uh, you know, still new baby, like a four month old. And uh, here I was, no matter what, gonna, <laughs> gonna get this book uh, going this year. So I've really been struggling. Truly, it's been a struggle. But I knew that if I wanted to see results, I had to keep going. I knew that if I wanted to change something in my life, I have to change something in my life. So that means I had to find time, whether I had to turn off the TV, get off social media. I know, like horrible. Who wants to do that, right? Well, I had to. Um, I might scroll Facebook for a minute. I mean, uh, a quick minute. And then I'm off. Um, but I have just really kind of gotten out of the habit of, you know, just sitting on, uh, on social media, but, um, I bet I still have to be careful not to let other things come in and try to steal my time. So, so that for instance is one thing that, uh, in the upcoming year, I've kind of set a goal. I set a goal in August of 2019 to finish my book and at least have it ready for publish or well for editing 
let's just say that, editing by June of 2020. So I will keep y'all updated on how I'm doing with that, held myself accountable, <laughs> and I have a great, um, you know, great husband who I'm accountable to, and he's amazing. He's my accountability partner when I say I'm going to do something. So that's just one major thing. Um, so that's a big deal, but again, I can't do it if I just keep talking about how I want to do it and never make a step, an action step towards doing that. So, um, you know, action is really important uh, versus just saying, you know, you're going to do something. So you kind of got to put movement to it. And the funny thing is, um, as I started writing, it was probably the worst part. The, the worst part for me really was realizing people are going to read this. They're going to read this and they're going to maybe criticize what it is that I've written or maybe they, they won't like it and you know just things like that so I, I had to really like get get off of my self-doubt wagon and just keep going and pushing through so anytime you make a decision for change or a decision toward a goal uh, there's going to be resistance there's going to be whether it's from an internal source like yourself um, or external sources like people telling you you know you can't do that who do you think you are you can't you know, don't you know, nobody's ever done anything like that before. Who cares? <laughs> do it. Just do it. Just try. Um, but I knew that it was just, you know, God, with God's help that I could do it because there's been so many times that I've just wanted to throw my hands up and say, there's no way I can do this. And truly there isn't, I'm not adequate enough. I'm not, a, I'm not a, an established writer or an English major, or I've never been through writing classes or anything like that. I'm just going to do what the Lord's told me to do. Um, so if there's something you want to do, I just ask him for help and, and just go for it. And you know what, if you fail along the way, you'll learn and you'll get better. And if you just keep getting back up, just keep getting back up and keep trying again, um, you'll succeed. And it, it does, you know, a lot of times in our world, we live in this instant gratification world where we want everything like right now. Like if I can't see results right now, I'll, I'm going to quit. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm right there. I am right there. I have to tell myself all the time, like, this is not going to happen overnight. You have to work for it. Um, uh, and, and it will happen if you give, you know, if you're consistent. Um, another area of my life where I'd like to see change, like most, probably most women out there are this way is, uh, with, with my body, with weight. Um, I have never really been a very thin person, but, um, you know, just my weight has fluctuated up and down and I've, I've struggled with an unhealthy food relationship and just not necessarily, um, I don't, I don't necessarily overeat, but I just eat at the wrong times and then I eat the wrong things. So they stick <laughs> and uh, I might maybe late at night I eat, you know, chips or crackers or something like that. Um, you know, and I don't eat early enough in the day. So anyways, there's habits that I've created that just have gotten, um, out of control. Uh, you know, at times and I have to like pull the reins and say, hmm, you know, mm, we should probably stop doing that. So, and you know, you know when you should stop doing something. But uh, for me, you know, I've lost like 35 pounds, 30 something pounds. It was 30, between 30 and 35 pounds this past year in 2019. Um, but, but I had a baby in 2018 and then I just had to, to lose, you know, some of that weight, which I still have some baby weight to lose. But, but really, um, you know, I should, I feel like I should have had more off by now. So I, you know, I don't really want to lose weight for other people to say, good job, you look great, which is fine. And that's, you know, I appreciate those compliments and whatever the reason is for you, it's okay. But, but for me, the reason is I want to be the strongest person that I can be. I want to be healthy. I want to, you know, be the strongest old person I can be. I'm not old now, but one day I will be. And I want to be strong then. So I need to take care of my body now so that when I am, you know, older, I'm not struggling with a lot of physical pains and injuries and just feeling fatigued real easily and not just uh, wanting to move and play. I have a 17, a 12 and a 12 year old and a one year old. I have a lot of, you know, of a one year old, y'all. I have a lot of energy. I have to keep up for the next, you know, long amount of time in my life. So I better keep myself fit. Um, but I did recently this, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was in June of this, of 2019. I did a DNA test. It's called DNA molecular fitness 
and you can go online and order the kit, swab your mouth, send it in. They'll send you this really beautifully put together um, report. And the report will tell you all kinds of really neat things about your body, like, um, you know, what kind of foods are good for you, what kind of foods you should stay away from. Um, like some people really like the keto diet and they, they just kind of take, you know, Hey, I'm not eating any carbs. Well, that test, that report told me that's not good for me. And that's true because, uh, you know, like a year and a half prior, I did whole 30, which is pretty close to keto, um, high fats and things like that. And I gained like 10 pounds and, um, everybody else was losing, <laughs> losing a lot of weight. And I was like, Hey, wait a minute, what's wrong with me? Um, it's because my body can't do, my specific body can't do a low carb diet. So anyway, that's not the point. But the point is it gave me all these really neat um, things to kind of know about specifically about my DNA. And one thing that it said in that report had to do with my muscular system, like my, uh, you know, the, everything that's, that's underneath, not having anything to do with food. It told me that my muscular system was that of a Olympic athlete or an elite athlete. So that told me that I'm strong. I have the capability to be strong. Not necessarily that I am currently strong, but I could be a whole lot stronger than I've ever given myself credit for. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting because I can't even do a push-up girl style. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Um, so I thought about that for a long time. Uh, and I, like the other day I was, I was thinking about it again and just kind of, again, just thinking about what can I do to um, continue being my healthiest self in 2020. And I, I just got this revelation from God. He reminded me of that part in the report. And he said, you know, Catherine, you have all this strength underneath you, but there's stuff that's kind of stuck to you. That's, that's covering all your strength up and, and there's excuses and there's, um, pain, past pain that you've not released. And there's, you know, there's all these things. And now I'm talking about spiritually here, guys. I'm not talking about physically. He started just showing me how that the same way that my physical body has this capability of being incredibly strong, much stronger than I ever gave it credit for, similar is my spirit. Similar is my spirit, man. I also have the capability of great strength, but I'm just not living in that. I'm not, I'm not living to my full potential. Just like I'm not operating, my body is not operating at its optimum potential. Um, so he just showed me that just like my body, just like my physical body, I need to release, you know, release some, some of the extra weight. I've got to get off about 25 more pounds um, to really, to be at a healthy range. And then I can still lose a little bit more after that and still be really healthy. Um, but for, for me, I really need to lose 25 pounds and it's pretty serious that I do for me. Um, so the less weight I carry on my frame, the easier it is going to be for me to move, uh, you know, to, to strengthen my body and, and to have less, you know, injuries and things like that. So I have to remove the fluff. I have to remove the excess baggage from my frame, from my body, and then strengthen what's underneath it. So just the same way he showed me that there's greatness inside of you, just like I'm saying this to you right now, there's greatness inside of you. You just have to uncover it. You have to get off all the stuff and you have to um, just sit, sometimes sit quietly in, in your secret place with the Lord and just say, God, you know, what is it that's, what is it that's clinging on to me and how do I get it off? Um, because even, even like losing weight, physical weight, it's really hard to get that physical weight off if we don't know how to eat healthy, if we don't know how to train our body, like we don't know what our body needs and we're just following the next fad diet and our bodies aren't responding well or we're starving ourselves to try and see results. Spiritually is the same way. We don't need to starve our spirit. We need to feed it, but we need to feed it good things and that we need to release all the stuff that's, that's clinging to us. So just get before the Lord and ask him how to do that because that takes, it just takes listening and it, ta and it is a process and it does take time and it is a commitment. But just like anything else, if you choose, you know, if you say, hey, I'm going to lose 15, 25, 100 pounds this year, whatever it is, it's a commitment and it's something that's um, going to be challenging and difficult and it's going to take time. But consistency, you'll see change and we, just like anything else. So I just... 
um, wanted to encourage you to, to think about and kind of get your wheels spinning a little bit about some things and have some goals for long-term change in your life and things that you would like to see or accomplish in the new year and in your life in general because little tiny changes add up you know over time and then you see this big change and you're like wow how did I get here like I've just one decision at a time one small um, thing at a time so I just encourage you this year to, to write a list set some goals and make them big make them things that you know you could not do them without the Lord's help you could not do them without God without God they would fail no matter what you know set some of those goals as well and then just write down some things maybe that you would just like to see accomplished like you want to clean out your closet <laughs> or silly things but hey you know what little things are like you know those big those little accomplishments add up to like big you know successes in our life and just keeps us going and makes us feel like you know we can move on to the next thing so don't discount small small um you know, goals either or small things that you'd like to see accomplished. So anyways, that's it for today, guys. I'm so glad you joined me and I hope that you have a fabulous uh, weekend. And uh, wherever you are, I'm in Tennessee. It's really nice and toasty and super humid here today. So wherever you are, I hope you stay warm and enjoy your January. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.